Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I had hinted at doing this video a few videos back and said that I was working on compiling fragrances in my collection that I would consider being a signature scent. Now I have people ask me a lot, like what is your signature scent? And I quite honestly, my collection is too large for me to have one because I switch it up every day. I wear something different every single day. However, I chose these fragrances based on the signature scent qualifications in my mind, which are, could I wear this every single day? Does it work for all seasons on my skin? If I had to choose one perfume, like if my collection just disappeared, which would be horrible, but if it did, and I had to choose one fragrance and only one, what fragrances in my collection would classify as something that I would be happy with picking. That's kind of my signature scent. Plus it has to embody my personality, but honestly, all of my perfumes do. I, would, I don't keep them if they don't. They don't stay in my collection. I'll sell them or give them to friends or family. I really only keep things that embody my personality, which it changes, right? Like, so I have some that are floral. I have some that are spicy. I have some that are sweet. And I have some that are bam in your face, like the one I'm wearing today, which we will get to. But I have eight fragrances here that to me, each and every one could be a signature scent. So let's hop right in. Now, please remember, I have so many fragrances in my collection. I have talked so much about so many. And if I have said how much I love one and you would think that it needed to be on this list, it probably could be. But this is the best that I could do to narrow it down. I'm not gonna go in any particular order, but I do think that I will save my very favorite for last. Let's start with the one that I have on my skin today. And I will tell you, it is 2.30 in the afternoon when I'm filming this. I put this on at 6.30 this morning and I can still smell it. I will say this is the hands down longest lasting perfume in my collection. It is an extract de parfum, which means it is even more concentrated. It has more perfume oil in it. So it is or should last longer on the skin. This is from Maison Crevelli. And I actually have two of the fragrances from this house in this video, but this one is called Patchouli Magnetic. And I've talked about it before. This is probably the most polarizing scent in my collection as well, because you're either gonna love it or you're going to hate it. It is a very strong scent. It has benzoin, it has obviously patchouli, it's got white peach, sandalwood, vanilla. And to me, this is a straight up peach patchouli bomb. And when I say bomb, I mean bomb, because it is very potent. I spray two sprays of this. That's all I sprayed this morning. I actually went and got my nails done and the hairdresser that shares kind of a wall with my nail, nail girl came in and was like, what oh, smells so good? And I stuck my arm out and I'm like, is it this? And she was like, is that? <laughs> so she liked it too, but this is, it has almost like a metallic accord to it a little bit, which I love. I love that kind of sharp accord to it. And it does, I feel like, need probably five or 10 minutes to really settle on the skin and develop and become this super smooth patchouli peach fragrance, which I think the vanilla and the sandalwood help that transition. But I do find I need to get past the first five or 10 minutes. But once I get past that, it is so unique. Definitely worth a sample of this. But because it's so unique and because I have worn it in super hot weather and cold weather, and it works all the time. And even though it maybe not doesn't have like the best reviews on Fragranica, I always get compliments on this. And to me, this just because of the peach, which I love, and patchouli, which I love, it's just a Mandy fragrance. So I could definitely have this be a signature, especially because you need two sprays of it. It's gonna last you forever. This next one is from Chanel. And I think that if you are someone who loves Chanel fragrances, who, likes a kind of vintage vibe, but also likes something that maybe is a little more spicy. Even though this technically doesn't have a spice note listed, I find that it's just a little more sensual and spicy. This is Cora Mandel from Chanel, one of my very favorites from the house. It has that classic Chanel opening, which I feel like is very aldehydic. However, it does not have aldehydes listed as a note. It does have patchouli in here, which I can kind of get, but it's definitely not as potent as the patchouli magnetic. 
but there's also incense. It has a note of white chocolate listed, which I don't really get, but maybe it just adds to the very underlying sweetness, like super underlying. I would not consider this a sweet fragrance at all. It also has a lot of citruses on the top, which I can smell, but it is not something that screams citrus perfume to me because I'm not really like into that. To me, this is the type of fragrance that a woman who just has her stuff together wears, right? That is very confident about wearing perfume, knows what she wants, knows what she likes. She's gonna wear it regardless. I love it so much. It is definitely one of my favorite Chanel's. So glad to have it in my collection. And again, I could wear it all year round. And even though I feel like there's like this kind of attitude that it puts out when you wear it, I still feel like it could be worn with a white t-shirt and jeans or going to the office or going out at night. It's a very versatile perfume, which I can't say for all the Chanel's, but for this one, at least for me, it is. Now, if you are someone who really likes vanilla, likes a smooth scent, likes something that's not overly powerful, but can still be smelled within like a two foot range. This is something that could definitely be one of my signature scents. And it is from Maison Francis Courtejean and it is Gentle Fluidity Gold. I've talked about this a lot because I love it. It is very smooth. I mean, the second that I spray it, that is the adjective that I think of. It is smooth. It is a little bit sweet, but it's mostly powdery. And it's got that amber vanilla composition that it's, I mean, it's an underlying vanilla. Okay, that is what I get. It has juniper berries listed in the notes, but I don't really smell a ton of that. I'm not big on juniper berries. To me, fragrances that have that listed as a dominant note smell like gin, and I do not like the smell of gin. This one does not have that. Now, Gentle Fluidity Silver is more along those lines, but the gold, I can see how it's in the composition, but it is not dominant. And then it has some nutmeg and coriander. So you have a little bit of spiciness, but it's not like a grand soie type of amber, which is also from MFK, which I also love. This is just all around beautiful, smooth vanilla. You have to like powdery scents to like this. I've seen a lot of people that say they don't like it because they aren't fans of powdery scents and they didn't think it was going to be. I'm not quite sure what gives it that in the composition, but it's definitely there. So keep that in mind, but just could definitely be a signature scent all around the board, beautiful. Now, if you are a sweet lover, which I very often am, I, you know, when I first started my fragrance journey, I always said I wanted to smell like cake or man. And that still kind of holds true, but my nose has definitely matured and I have expanded what I love to smell like, but this is the sweetest out of all the ones that I'm gonna talk about but I don't think I could ever get sick of it. Like I could totally see this being something that people, when they think of Mandy, think of this scent. And this is from Perfumum Roma and it is Ceriso. And this is the, I think this is the 18 mil. You can see how much I have used of it. It doesn't get much sweeter than this when the notes are vanilla, chocolate, orange, and woody notes. Here's the thing. I don't get a ton of the orange. Like there's some perfumes out there that are very reminiscent of the, you know, the chocolate orange that comes in a wrapper and then you unwrap it and it falls into wedges, the orange wedges, but it's made of chocolate that tastes like orange chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? It's not like that. The orange is in the background. It's the chocolate and the vanilla that stand out in this. That's what it is. It is a very linear fragrance in my opinion. It does not change as I wear it. It is just a chocolatey vanilla goodness. One of my favorite chocolates I have in my collection, hands down the most complimented fragrance in my collection. Every single time I wear this, I get at least one person asking what I'm wearing or I get people following me around the store to ask what I'm wearing, which happened one time when I wore this in Target. Um, one of the cashiers literally followed me down like five or six lanes to ask me what I was wearing. So, so, so good. If you like a sweet perfume, this is definitely one to check out. The next time I repurchase this, when this is gone, I will be getting the big size because I always wanna have it in my collection. I could wear it all year round. It is super sweet, but I can still wear it in the heat. Maybe it would be cloying to some people, but it's not to me. I was never one that was big into florals until probably about a year ago. And I'm still not into all florals. I'm really not a rose person. There are two floral notes that I absolutely adore. 
and whenever they are listed in a composition of a fragrance, I want to at least try them. One of which is Two Bros. I have become such a lover of Two Bros, and I feel like Two Bros is kind of like Rose. You either love it or you don't, which I mean can be said for all floral fragrances. Two Bros can often be very indolic, meaning like it, it kind of smells like it's dying, right? Like to me, a flower smells the best the day before it dies. It's almost like it's ripened, right? And Two Bros can sometimes be on that side of it, but it can also be very creamy smelling. It can be fresh, it can be green. There's lots of different ways a Two Bros can smell. Now, this is the only one that I'm gonna talk about that I only have a decant of, but the full size will be in my collection. At some point or another, it will be. I just bought an, a full size from this house. It wasn't this. I'll talk about that in a future video. But this is Amouage Love Tube Rose. So I'll put a picture of what the actual bottle looks like. And like I said, I just have a little decant, but the full size will be in my collection. This to me is a Tube Rose fragrance for people that don't even like Tube Rose. It's maybe an introduction to Tube Rose. It is gorgeous. It has gardenia and jasmine in it as well. So it is a mixture of white florals, but honestly, Tube Rose is the main floral that I get, which due to its name is probably the point and it works. It also has whipped cream in it, which gives a little bit of a sweet undertone, especially once it's mixed with the vanilla. And as it dries down, it has sandalwood and cedar in it. I don't get it a super woody vibe from this. It's mostly a straight, sweet, creamy Tube Rose. That's what I get out of this. It's not fresh. I don't get a green. Like there's some scents that I get a real sharp Tube Rose from. And I love those scents like Carnal Flower by Frederick Mall. Mm, love it so much. But I don't know that I could make that a signature because it is so sharp. And I really have to be in the mood for something like that. Whereas this, I would like every single day. It is smooth enough. It's sweet enough. It's oh so good. Oh, so good. So if you like Tube Rose, even if you don't like Tube Rose, it is definitely one to check out. At least get a sample of it. So good. I said I had two favorite florals. Tube Rose was one of them. Iris is another. Iris was my first floral love when it came to perfume because I do love a powdery scent. So whenever you see Iris listed or Oris Root or Oris Butter, something of that nature listed in the notes of a fragrance, you're likely gonna have some kind of powdery accord at some point of the dry down of the fragrance. And I love that. This is the newest fragrance to my collection of the ones that I'm talking about today. And it is again from Maison Crevelli and it is Iris Malacan. Mm. Okay, so when you look at the accords on Fragrantica, it does say that it is a green fragrance and it is. When you first spray it, I get greenness of it, but I also get the leather. The leather and the iris are what shine for me in this. There's amber, there's cinnamon, there's mimosa, which is quickly becoming another favorite floral of mine. Mimosa can also be very powdery. The cinnamon adds a little bit of spice. There's cypress in here too, which adds kind of a sharp greenness. My main takeaway from this is leather and iris and it is absolutely beautiful. It is not as linear as some of the other ones that I've talked about. What I get from this is a little bit of greenness at the top, and then that quickly dissipates to be the leather and the iris, and then as it dries down, it gets even sweeter. I feel like there's that vanilla that comes through. There's also a black currant syrup note listed in this, and that I think is coming through too to make this just glorious, sweet, but then also leathery, deep iris scent, but it is not overpowering. So I could spray this like five or six, seven times. And you know, I mean, it's going to be overpowering to anybody who's around me when I spray it, but within like 10 minutes, it really, the, the sillage is not, but like an arm's length away. It becomes a skin scent after a few hours, but I don't even care because I've said many times, I don't wear fragrance for other people, I wear it for myself. And this scent bubble around me makes me happy. It brings me joy. There's something about this that's absolutely glorious. It is very popular for a reason. And even though it has leather in there and it is very dominant to my nose, I still feel like I'm, I can wear this all year round. I wore it two days ago and it was like 95 degrees outside and I was completely fine with it. 
so beautiful. And honestly, I, I'm going to be really selfish and I don't want to share it, but I do want to smell this on Chad because I feel like that leather cord would just be mm, so good. Okay, two more. This next one, such a gem in my collection because I waited so long to get this. This is from the House of Maison Sear and it is Poudre d'Or. And when I say I waited so long, I have gotten samples of this. I have fallen in love with this. I have gone through decants of this. It was out of stock everywhere. I could not get this fragrance. And then Selfridges had it in stock and I snapped it up as fast as I can because the last time Selfridges had it in stock, it went out of stock very fast, but I was able to get my hands on this and I don't regret a second of it. This is a wonderful house. I have tried many from them. I also really love Trey Sherry. I love Sweet Praline. I love Solar, really I love all of them. But this one is hands down my favorite, hence the reason it's my first full size bottle. Probably not my last from this house by any means. This to me, it takes me back. There's something very nostalgic about this scent to me. I don't know where it takes me back to. I don't know if it takes me back to one of my grandmas, if it takes me back to just a certain memory in my life, I don't know. But this has tiari flower in it. It's got jasmine. The tiari flower gives it a little bit of a tropical feel, but just a little bit. I would not put this in the vein of like suntan lotion scents or specific summer scents by any means. It has musk and iris, which I do get the iris because the iris is what gives it that powdery, the pudra, right? It's what gives it that oh so gorgeous. This is probably out of all of them to me, the most feminine perfume that I've talked about. And it just evokes so much for me, <laughs> so much. I can't even put it into words. And then you have sandalwood and vanilla in the dry down. It's not a lot of notes, right? It's not this complex fragrance, but I get the musk and I get the iris and I get the musk more as it dries down and the iris because of the powderiness. Beautiful. Like, I can't tell you, this is one of my very favorite perfumes ever. It is so gorgeous, and I would definitely be a-okay wearing this every single day as my signature scent. I would want people to smell this and think of me. It is just so gorgeous. Okay, and the last one is definitely one that I have talked about many, many, many times before. This is from the House of Mancera. I kind of feel like this is my signature scent anyways because my youngest daughter, who's the one that really kind of pays attention to scents the most, comments on this a lot when I wear it. It was like, oh, you're wearing that perfume again. Oh, you know, and I could see her smelling this in the future and thinking of me, which just, mm, that is what a signature scent is all about. And this is Velvet Vanilla. Again, a tuberose dominant fragrance. This is a very sweet tuberose. The Love Tuberose from Amouage was more of a creamy with a subtle sweetness. This is sweet. It does have orange and black currant in the opening, so it's maybe a touch of fruit, but the main players that I feel like I smell in this is tuberose, pear, and angelica, which are all on the top notes of this fragrance. Actually, tuberose is in the middle. I feel like it should be on the top because that's what I get. It has clove and pink pepper, which I can kind of get with a little bit of an edge of spiciness to it, but the majority of this I get is like a bubblegummy tuberose because tuberose can often smell like bubblegum in a way. Some people like that, some people do not. I love it and I especially love it in this scent. I, I just get that tuberose, I get the Angelica. And the reason I say I get the Angelica, cause this is very similar to me to Angelique Noir from Guerlain, which some people may not agree with me on that, but I find it to be very similar. I don't even think tuberose is listed in the Angelique Noir, but I think it's that Angelica that's really taking me back to that. Super, super long lasting. Next to the Patchouli Magnetic, this is the longest lasting out of all of that I've talked about on my skin. And I do feel like, I mean, I have used a good dent in it. It doesn't look like it because, you know, you would think a good dent would be at least half, but with all of the ones I have in my collection to have used this much, I feel like this is a pretty good dent. And for Mancera, I do not get that super synthetic note that can be in a lot of their perfumes, especially upon first spray. I don't get that in this one. I feel like this is really well blended and it doesn't have that but it's gorgeous. It is so, so, so gorgeous. To me, it is one of the safer Manceras if you have not tried it. I personally love Mancera as a house. I have a whole video on them. I will put it up in a card if you haven't seen it. 
And this one is just, it's just a little bit safer because it doesn't have that synthetic note, but it's still so beautiful. It has a lot of florals, but it's not floral. It is more just sweet and uplifting and totally could be a signature scent. I feel like is probably on the verge for me if you could say I have one with my vast collection. I'm gonna have Chad come in here real quick and smell all these and tell y'all which one his favorite is. Can you smell all these and tell me which one your favorite is? You don't have to get on there. Oh. I mean, you can talk. I told him you're coming in. Oh, am I? Yeah. Hey, peeps. <laughs> what do you call your peeps? Not peeps. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and this is Chad. <laughs> This is People radio. Rock into the oldies. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hard to say. Out of those three, oh. you got to pick one. Okay. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. All right, so his top three were Chanel Coromandel, Love Two Bros from Amouage, and his favorite, which I feel like is just the stamp of approval and goes to show how amazing this fragrance is, Poudre d'Or by Miss Sincere. And y'all, he's picky. If you've seen any of our fragrance videos together, then you would know. He definitely is picky and he kept going back to that one as he was sniffing. So this is the winner for Chad. I love all of them. I really do. And I could definitely, every single one of these be my signature scent. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what your signature scent is down in the description box or what you think it would be if you have a bigger collection. I love to hear what other people are loving. I will have everything listed and linked down in the description box. Some of them are affiliate links. I have some codes. They help me out. I appreciate it if you choose to use them. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, safe, and sane. And most of all, you go out and have a very blessed day.